Good evening, everybody. Um, while I'm working with this slow mouse to get us off of this, um, <laughs> just wanted to kind of um, share some some special moments, and I'm sure that it hit everybody. Uh, some of you uh, are differently than others, so. Um, again, we're so thankful. Father, thank you for allowing us this precious and special moment in time and space. We might share one to another, one with another, our lives in some small way and what homecoming has meant to us. And Father God, we pray that it will cause us to be linked to one another and we will find a fullness and a wholeness in being one. And we just want to honor you and honor your name in Christ Jesus' name. And amen. Uh, you know that, beloved, I was uh, encouraging you to share what Homecoming 2021 meant to you. Break camp, go north with our uh, guest speaker, Brother Alvin L. Daniels Jr. Oh, Mario Tonsil as the guest uh, worship leader, as well as uh, Chester Mayfield and our own Michael Copeland. And uh, it just was a, a time of... of um, well, I don't, I don't, I'll start talking. So I'm going to open the floor now for those who, um, uh, who have joined us. And I would love to hear from you then what homecoming meant to you in uh, November 5th to 7th, uh, 2021. I guess we got dead space or somebody talking and I don't know it. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay. Okay. This is Sister Ashanti. Um, homecoming 2021 to me was refreshing from the beginning, from preparation, but from the beginning and you know, all the way through to the end. So starting on Friday night, um, I believe that was just the pathway and the outlet of just looking at where, and I'm individualizing it, looking at where I was at, but going into the text with Brother Daniels, but looking at where I was at, it allowed me to see the things that I didn't have to be fearful of allowing to leave my life so that I could move forward or fearful of the things that have happened in my life, whether they felt tragic to me or whether they felt uncomfortable to me. But the, the fact to me, it still all led to going north. Let me put that in. For me, even the context, hold on, I'm in Lonnie's class. <laughs> the context of it is still felt to me. I was able to maneuver from where I was at in the head space and be okay with moving northward. Saturday, I enjoyed the singing and the fellowship. Um, that was refreshing. And of course, on Sunday, I was completely <laughs> engulfed. And I'm, I'm kind of, because I don't have my notes in front of me or what I wrote down. So I'm going to stop first and I might be able to chime back in later. But it was all, all of it to me helped me to see and refocus again on where God had already led us from before. And I actually mentioned that to somebody after service. I said, do y'all remember in 2010, we were already leaving Kadesh and supposed to be heading north. We were already, so I was calculating time in my head. It was like a lot of things were going through my head as I was leaving out that building. I said, but God is saying, here it is. You didn't came around this mountain again. He said, you're going through some things, but don't lose sight. And your north might look different from somebody else's, but it's still, it's still heading where I want you all to go as long as you stay in me. And for me, North, I'm looking up. And I remember us taking a picture where we all were looking up. But that was just the process that I had even leaving on Sunday. That's all I'm going to say now. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's powerful. Good evening. Hello. So for me, I know it was homecoming but it was a revival. Um, that's how I saw it. It was a revival. It was um, almost like a confirmation. If, if there was any doubt whatsoever, um, given some of the things that we've gone through, it's like God is saying, 
I'm still here. I've been here and I'm still leading you. Just follow, um, continue to follow me, follow my guidance. It was just a revival that was just, it was, it was needed. And um, it was exciting to me. It's like, I just look forward to everything about it. Um, I wasn't able to make it Friday night, but Saturday with, um, with the singing and then the sermon, I was just, I was just so full that night. And then to top it off with Sunday, it was just unbelievable. Um, not to mention Sunday morning sermon, um, giving us a, a new perspective of how we should look at our leaders in the church. And if we um, did forget at one point um, how to appreciate the people that God have put in our path to lead us and get us closer to him. And if we were taking them for granted, it was like we were able to just have our eyes open. And it's so easy to take the people that we see and the people that are leading us, um, the people that have been with us and working and giving through all, I'm talking about you, Brother Dublin, in case you didn't know. Um, it was just, <laughs> it was just, you know, sometimes we can take, you know, people for granted and not realize it. So it was just refreshing to me. It was just wonderful. And I needed all of it. I took all of it in. And if there was more, I would have taken that too. So it's almost like I didn't want it to end. And so it, it was just wonderful to me. And like I said, it was a revival for my soul. So I'm, I'm truly grateful. It doesn't matter what label we put on it. If that's what your North looks like, I'll take that revival because that's powerful. And God delivered to you what you needed the way you needed it. So wonderful, fat, fat, fantastic. Thank you so much, beloved. Somebody else want to share? Uh, I'll go next. Um, <clears throat> I thought uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I just, I just thought everything was awesome. From again, the message uh, Friday that Brother Daniels came um, to tell us about uh, with with Naomi and, and Ruth and and highlighting Naomi and and her struggle and her story and. Um, but, you know, seeing, you know, as she came back, it was in the harvest season, see, in harvest season, it was just like, hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, and so even with all that she had dealt with, it was like, she came back to, you know, a, a season in her weariness, she came back to, to abundance, really. Um, and then, you know, Saturday was a great, um, just talking with, um, Tiffany and Marley and Michael and, um, Melody um, who else? There's a few of us uh, Saturday uh, afternoon uh, before the concert. And of course, the, the concert was awesome. Southside always does a great job. Um, but then as I was going to grab, grab and get everybody some water, I see my friend uh, Isaiah Owens and his, and his wife Latoya. And I'm like, because ah! <laughs> I hadn't seen them since, uh, we've seen him since COVID started. And I hadn't met her yet. We've only uh, talked through Facebook. So it was really good to, to see both of them um, and see Sister Amanda and, you know, other, other people that, you know, I would have usually seen at different lectureships or um, different conferences and seeing them, um, you know, at homecoming and just seeing like just, just the packed house period. Um, and then Sunday, it was just, a, 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 it just revved up another level. And, um, you know, the, 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 the nine o'clock or the, yeah, the nine o'clock service, you know, with the singing and then. With Brother Daniel's teaching on uh, the ministers. It, I mean, it definitely was like, it was, it was a confirmation of what happened. And then also like a confirmation of release. It was like a confirmation of the, the darkness and a confirmation of the light <laughs> all in one to like, just release and like continue to move forward and go North and to just, uh, and to do it in a way that is in gratefulness. Um, that is in, in honor and reverence and not only just not knowing where we may be headed, but just doing it in a totally different way 
um, of gratefulness with God because he has kept us uh, for so long. He's kept South Central so long. And it's just a testament to God's goodness, um, how long he's he, how long he's kept us. And it's, But the word, the fellowship, um, everything was just uh, amazing. And it was, uh, as we always say, the best one yet. I couldn't even get back to work, you know, the following day. I, I still haven't really worked yet. <laughs> because it's, it's still been exciting. I've just been reading, you know, scriptures and stuff. Um, but it was just amazing all, all the way around. Well, when you work for yourself, you can take days off. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing with your enthusiasm and the way that it impacts you and still impacts you. So that does matter. Okay, is there anyone else? Yeah. Um, this Pat Tippin. Um, even though I wasn't there in physically, I, I was there in the spirit because I felt the spirit even here at home. The spirit was in the house this weekend, and um, like I was telling Pat Baker, the, the the man of God, brother Daniel, he just brought he brought the word. He brought it to us. The whole whole weekend was spirit filled, and uh, he took us north. And what an amazing journey it was that he took us because he started out with with the, talking about Ruth and Naomi and the harvest, and you know that, that they left they left she left um, she left um, during a drought with, and and when she came back it was she came back in a harvest and she didn't realize how good things had, she's thinking everything is bad but actually everything is good because the harvest time is here. So this this is our harvest time, and we need to take advantage of it and do what we're supposed to be doing. And then the fact that he that he took us on in doing one of his sermons, he back, took us back to the Red Sea, like you, you know when they were going going to, before they went north, they went back and saw the Red Sea. We have been seeing the Red Sea, and so now we 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 got those remembrances of what. God has brought us through by visualizing it in the red seat that we've been through. And now it's time to move forward and know that God can take us there. And the part that really got me was the part where when he was telling us that we don't have to, God is going to do it. We just, we, we just claim it. We, got, we can claim it. We don't have to say, be praying that to let us get this, but we can, we know where we want to go and we can claim the victory because uh, God is going to take us there. And um, like I said, um, the whole weekend, even though I was here at home, I felt the spirit. And I really appreciate this, this homecoming for the fact that it was so fair field. And that's all I got to say for right now. Uh, well, that's all you. That's all you need to say, because when you speak, you speak as God's child who has gone through stuff that I can't even think that I could ever even do. So when you say what you say, it speaks volumes for the glory of God and for your own tenacity and desire to serve God and the rewards and the blessings that He's given. So, and you're right, the Holy Spirit was there, here, and everywhere. <laughs> He's just like that. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? Good evening. <laughs> Mike, can you hear me? Good evening, beloved. Yes, I can. You know what? I tell you what. I really, I don't know how to put into words what I witnessed this weekend, but I just want to say I, I was in awe. I was just in awe from Friday, Saturday, up into Sunday. Sunday really blew my mind. And I was just sitting there thinking, I really couldn't even process. I was like, what in the world is God doing here? But I just, it was just like I could see God's hand moving in the whole situation, Mike, because I was thinking I really had a chance to sit out Monday and process everything. And I thought, you know, I've been, this is one of the better ones yet, you know, and we are so few in number, but God's spirit moved up in there in a way that, we didn't skip a beat. I said, you know, to myself, I was like, you know, I've never been a part of the planning committee, any of that. 
and I know, I don't know how I operated in the years past, but I know one thing for sure. I was present at this planning committee, this planning committee, <laughs> you threw it out there, Mike, the ministry members just took it and ran with it. We all got on the same accord. We worked together. We were unified. Wasn't no bickering, wasn't no messing. Wasn't, we was about the business. We had two meetings, one to, for you to tell us what you, you know, put the plan out there. Two was the week before when you say, where you at? What you need? How far are you? Everybody gave, they put their input in it. Everybody took off, worked that thing. <sighs> we were so few in number and God just showed up in such a mighty way. We didn't skip a beat. I was just, I was, it was breathtaking. I just couldn't even find the words. I had to. I had to reflect back on Saturday night, sing along. When, when, when ASAP was singing and Sister Kim, I think Stevenson up there, she was had her stirred up. Every time I think about that this week, I think about I just get all stirred up all over again. I'm like, this was awesome. I mean, I this was awesome. God has really got his hand on South Central. We going somewhere. It was brought out, it was confirmed this weekend. So y'all. I'm on board. We going. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And you're highlighting what came out for you and the few in numbers, because it's never been about numbers. It's about God having a willing few people to do what he's always done. That's what he's always done. And he demonstrated that through you guys and through a mind that was centered on doing the will of God and to glorify him. So you guys demonstrated what that really means. And I can't thank you enough for what you guys did. Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, this is Sarita. I just wanted to say that this year I was just thirsty for homecoming. I was excited for it to come. And Friday, I couldn't make it, but we, we watched it on YouTube at home. And then we were definitely able to make it Saturday and Sunday. And oh, there was, I can't explain, like my thirstiness for homecoming was definitely quenched. I have watched it and relived homecoming um, twice this week uh, through YouTube. Um, I just could not get enough of the message and the singing. And I mean, it was better than water. It was like coconut water with the extra vitamins, nutrients, and electric lights. Now, I, I absolutely enjoyed it. And, it. and it just spoke to everything that I needed right now. Amen. And the way you described it, I, I tell you, that's thrilling to hear you talk about how God's elements were put together the water, the coconut, all of those stuff that give us the energy and revival of the soul. So, uh, and, and having the technology in place to be able to share that when you couldn't be in place. So it, again, it's a powerful testimony. You've been around here so long. So uh, it's especially heart woman when it comes from someone who uh, has been with the church a long, long time. So thank you so much for sharing, beloved. But I, you know, I don't like dead spaces, and uh, we don't we don't want to uh, not give everybody an opportunity. But it's coming a little bit slower than uh, our time is going to allow us. So uh, I um I totally enjoyed homecoming as well. I was excited about being there Friday night, even pre that. Just even just having the fellowship with Ashanta and Clarissa doing the decorations, you know, we were really involved with that and um, enjoyed just being together and just hyping, looking forward to homecoming. And um, I Friday night spoke to me, we coming back. <laughs> and just, um, I don't know, I can see myself in the story of Naomi and Ruth in different areas of, of my past. And, um, and just want to always recognize who was there with you when it, when you were uh, in the famine quote area, and who's there with you in the harvest. And 
how to be thankful. We know that um, life is hard in some areas, and um, but to not let life take you down, but you keep pressing on and keep moving. Nor um, I enjoyed it. That, that just started it off with me. And then on Saturday, the singing, oh my goodness, I enjoyed it so much, so much, so much. And even the fellowship on Friday night. And then I saw so many people coming in from, um, oh my goodness, um, Saxonville, Barefoot Road. I met so many people that came in from Barefoot Road. I said, we've never had that many, well, if any, come from Barefoot Road homecoming. And that was just so good. They were spending the night. They were coming back every day. Just, it was just amazing. And the, um, so yeah, I, you know, I love singing anyway. So I'm so glad to be there for that. And on Sunday, that was a very emotional time. The Sunday morning lesson. And I think it was well needed. And I just thank God for your leadership. And um, I didn't, I was in children's church, but I knew on Saturday, I text Mojo, I said, Mojo, we're going to have more children than we normally have. Who's going to help me out? <laughs> so she takes her back and say, well, I asked Sylvia to be back up. Sylvia said, and she was ready, ready. I said, and no doubt. When I saw her, children Saturday night I knew Sunday was going to be way more we had 10 children <laughs> and they were delighted to be with us. and I I hate right now that I didn't take a picture of all those children in a group or even just by themselves but they was real special to be with them so the parents could be up there enjoying the lesson and um it was the best one yet <laughs> <laughs> Well, there, again, you incorporated the children. Sometimes when things are going on, we're not even thinking about somebody as being downstairs with the children and what all of that actually means. And Cynthia, I had already taken care of that, and Sylvia was uh, uh, happy to support the work. And somebody has to get out of the green seats and go another place and do the work. And uh, at Homecoming, we've always tried to minimize that, but we also realized that that was a part of the gift of service that, that each person gave when they gave to themselves that way. So, yeah, reminding us of the children uh, and what they have uh, to contribute in the days that are ahead and how this is affecting them and, and becoming a tradition for them as well. So, seeing you guys serve that way and being a part of it has to matter for generations and generations. Um, this is Michelle Foster. I just wanted to say um, I was glad, I'm glad to have been a part of the homecoming 2021. Um, I know I haven't been at South Central for very long, but I try and get involved with um, most things if I can. And it's just been a blessing. And I know that um, it was just a confirmation to me that I'm in the right place at the right time with the right people and I'm going north. Um, I just I just felt so good and I still feel so good. And it was just an awakening to me. It really was. It was an awakening to me and I'm just glad to be here. And like I said, I, I know that I'm in the right place. And thanks for letting me be a part of um, the homecoming. Um, that's it. I'm just glad to be here, glad to be a part of it. And I just felt so good. Thank you. <laughs> Michelle, it felt good. It feels like you've been here quite a while now, much longer than you have been, because when you do decide to get involved as you did, you get involved in a way that makes your presence known. And so all of the things you got, you still brought something with you. And all of that is a part of the flavor, the revival, all of what is going on and happening. So your presence 
not only what you have done, but who you are, and all of that matters. So God was able to use all of that in the most powerful way to glorify himself. Hey, Brother Devlin, this is Miranda. This is Miranda. Hey. Hey. Um, Miranda. Hey, I was so excited to be there, and I was telling my sister, I said, y'all, I got to make homecoming, got to make homecoming, so Valerie and Roger made sure they got here early, so I wasn't creeping into Raleigh about 10 o'clock. So it was just, it was wonderful to be there and picking up where I left off at the last homecoming was down in the kitchen with the sisters. And it was such a joy to work with um, Dawn and Michelle um, and, and just getting to know them. So we had a good time Saturday and um, Friday and Saturday. And I need to go back and look at the, the messages and the, the, um, the singing for those two nights. But Sunday was just amazing it's almost like I wanted to pinch myself so many times just for be, being in the sanctuary because previously I'd have been down with the food but it was it was just amazing it was so spirit filled and and you know just happy and sad at the same time and and just you know making me think of things that you know were where I fall short and then I pick up and I keep going and and it's just that vicious cycle but I know I just have to keep going north and that that was that's the purpose that's our purpose so but I just thank you so much for your leadership and the support of all the church family to me and my family. So just, just glad to be a part of the family. Well, Randy, for you to be there under the circumstances in which you've served, I've never experienced a person serving their family the way you have. I have honestly never seen that before. And I can't even comprehend it, to be honest with you, but I comprehend you as a person who is devoted to God and to the people that God has assigned you to. And uh, it, it does not go unnoticed. So uh, that's, that's just a, a great place in this church for you and much of your life and living is still ahead of you. And you, you, you symbolic of everything that we need. And uh, you're talking about a servant's heart. Uh, you don't recognize it, but the rest of us do. And we thank God you are who you are. Mm, thank you. My, um, this is Emma. Homecoming for me began way before the day of that Friday. Um, that week I had talked with um, Dr. McPhail's niece who works in our building. And I was telling her about homecoming and she was asking me about it. And I told her, I said, well, I got a flyer and uh, I'll get that to you. And I talked about the concert. Um, people who know me, know me, know that a lot of my healing from things that I go through comes to me through music. Um, God didn't give me with the voice to sing <laughs> um, solo by myself, but my healing thoroughly comes to me through music. I love the word, um, but I received so much healing Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And it amazes me so much when I see my family because I I was baptized at South Side and now I'm at South Central. And to see my family on both sides coming in and marrying, marrying the music, the different forms, the different styles, and I can still get healing and I'm blessed from both of my family members, my whole family. It's not like I, South Side, South Central. No, the South is my family, <laughs> okay? That is just my family. And then to hear Brother Daniel's words, um, which um, when he made the comment about how the music and the sermons go hand in hand, I could relate. I, I can understand, I understood completely and the most touching part for me was when Cece was standing up there with you, Brother Dublin, and she honestly shared the feelings of the truth of being the first lady or, or the wife of you, the minister, and since sharing what yeah you tell us not that i don't believe what you say when you talk about how hard it is but for her to give us that confirmation because she doesn't say a whole lot and for her to set my heart was broken to realize that 
that I can be so um, uncaring about the things that not uncaring, but not really focusing in on all of the elements of what you do as our leader, all of the distractions that come your way that we put on you <laughs> as I lead our leader. And I appreciate that. I appreciated her so much. I appreciated Brother Daniels for putting that out there to make us stop and look. And the last thing is that he was preaching about them when they was going around that mountain and they kept going around, they passed the Red Sea. And I was sitting in my seat thinking, well, why didn't they go a different direction? Why did they keep going? Did nobody not see that there was another way to go? But as my spirit was wrestling with that in my head, he came back and he bought an answer. And I'm like, look at the spirit. He brought that thing back around and addressed why they were still going around <laughs> that mountain. Homecoming for me, it meant it's always a revival, as Marley said. And two, one of the other things I noticed is that there were so many of brothers and sisters in the building. It's almost like we even forgot that COVID even existed. You know, there was those hugs. It was like, so what? We in here. We're going to hug. We're going to celebrate life. And, and I truly enjoyed homecoming. I did. Well, you know, when you shared some ways you get distracted, well, I, I I never had a problem with you. I don't think you're distracted. You you take care of your mom. You take care of your grown daughters, your grand your, your grandchildren, and there's so much that you do that I'm I'm just thankful that you do what you do because all of that's God's work. And, and and I would like for you to do less of it across the board. Now I'm getting into your business, but I'm going to do that. And uh, so I'm just I'm just just wanting you to well, work in a full time job and all the stuff you do. Uh, it's 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 just an amazing amazing journey. And I I've shared this with him. I was on a I worked at Durham Council on Alcoholism, and I would uh, get with her a long long time ago, and I was always amazed. And Emma, because I knew she was, I knew she went to Southside, and I always thought she was tough. I said, she looked like she would kick you behind. And and I always thought she was like that. And I'm serious, and I've told her that on, on multiple occasions. And <laughs> But the tough person that she is, she is tough like that. And she's that way because she's dedicated to uh, what she does and who she is. And she has not deviated from that. So I never felt like you neglected anything. I just always felt like you on overload. And uh, But I'm so thankful that you have the determination to actually uh, do what you do the way that you do it. Brother Dublin, I just wanted to um, say it's, it's something else that just came to me and I forgot to mention it. So sure. I had invited a few of my neighbors to 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 whom come in as I usually do. And one of the couple came and she's been there a few times and she just enjoys um, um, hearing you preach. So whenever I invite her, she always looks forward to, to coming in. I believe she met Cece. I don't think, I don't think she um, met you and some of the other sisters there because she and I, we talk a lot and, and she knows that I speak highly of you in South Central and all of my sisters in Christ there. It's almost like she knows a lot of the people there, but she came in at the end where you were standing there with, with Cece and she said that she was just so touched by everything that was said. And then at the end, and she was so excited to see how you were um, just appreciated at the end uh, when they did that love offering, she said it really touched her heart to see that because she said a lot of times we don't see that. Um, and that's what I had mentioned about sometimes we take it for granted of what our um, our leaders in the church are going through and how they need our support. And sometimes, you know, we're, we, we may not be available, but she was really, really touched by that. So she and her husband really enjoyed the service. I looked back there and she was up clapping and singing and just all excited. So that did my heart some good uh, as well, just to see her there and participating with us and 
and she's saying I'm going north too so <laughs> not, knowing, <laughs> not really knowing the history but she was like we were talking outside she said I'm going north too I don't know what's going on but I'm going north too so she was really really excited about that and I also wanted to mention uh what what Emma said about seeing her family as far as South Side and South Central coming together. I'm the same way because of course, when Gary and I moved here, we were going to South Side and we were there for a good six, seven years. And then when he started working out of state, we, we became members at South Central. So I always look forward to seeing South Central and South Side together because I look forward to seeing my family from South Side and then um, reuniting with them and that's always such a wonderful time for me every time we do things with them is just wonderful and it's just good to you know just my heart is always so overwhelmed when I see them so I, I truly enjoy every time you're able to bring us together so I truly appreciate that and appreciate you as well thank you Marley thank you so much I feel the same way. Uh, I love Southside. I mean, I just, I feel like I, in fact, I know I'm a member over there and they're members over here. And we just do so much together and much of what we, and we've had crises together. And uh, when they had a, a church split, I went over on a, on a Sunday night and I did, I think, five different sessions to keep them uh, from becoming bitter toward uh, the people who left and and they trusted me enough to, to lead them through that process and when it happened to us I needed to go back and, and redo all them lessons for myself but I say that to say seriously that they have um, um, so much going on and we conf confer with each other all the time and um, I just uh, I just admire them and love what they do Chester and I have been hanging together a long time, as well as as William. It's not just uh, the, the 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 preacher. Um, I'm close to a lot of people over there, and, and it's with William's knowledge too. So there's no they directly with me. I always talk to the leaders of any congregation if I'm having an ongoing relationship. Uh, that's that's a, a protocol that's unwritten, but Southside has meant meant quite a bit uh, to us as a church. Probably 70% of the people that I know who are preachers, like Alvin Daniels and David Wilson and uh, Barclay and a few others, I met them through William. Had I not met William and been a friend of William, I would never have gotten those speakers. So um, it does matter. And they rely on me for certain things. I rely on them for certain things. And so that combination of the two congregations means, yeah, we, we've had a major impact. And um it, it does matter. It does matter. Um, beloved, is there anyone else? We're at uh, 741. And if I, there's no one else. I just, ahead, um, uh, I just want to add one thing. Uh, my son loves music and instruments and stuff. And ever since Saturday night, He's been practicing Chester's bass line on his microphone. And I told Chester that <laughs> Sunday. So it had a big impact on the little ones, too. <laughs> hey, our up and coming bass. <laughs> I, had bass. One other, I had one other thing I forgot to mention, too. I was just so amazed that I was only to Michael and how he could turn those hymns into praise songs and Oh, I just really got into that. I really appreciate that. All of the song leaders. When I, well, you have to, own. <laughs> yeah, he, when you when he's around other people like that, when you're talented, it brings even more out of you. So uh it just he's he's becoming more and more used to us. He's 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 feeling his freedom and he knows he's in a great environment to do what he wanna do. So, uh, yeah, it's, he's emerging more and more. And it, it's just great for his dad to be Doc and, and, and for him to be returning to North Carolina. Harold is from Raleigh, his wife. And it's just, it's just so beautiful to see uh, all of that come together and him really feeling comfortable enough to be who he needs to be and blends in with our uh, praise team because everybody, nobody on our praise team is jockeying for position. Everybody says, 
whatever it takes, that's what I'll do. And they just roll with it. So it was powerful. I mean, it really, really was powerful. If you have your Bibles, beloved, if you don't, it's okay. I just want to leave this with you. The last Psalm is Psalm 150. And the last verse uh, in Psalm 150 in verse 6 says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Do you have breath? <laughs> do I you do. have breath? No Amen. Yes. I do. So yes. if you have breath, then God is expecting you to praise him. Mm -hmm. He's expecting every one of us to praise him. He doesn't want to have excuses. He doesn't care about textbook, texting and face, all of that. He wants to be praised. God created us to praise him. That is why we exist. And then the psalmist says, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him from the skies. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all the armies of heaven. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you twinkling stars. Praise him, skies above. Praise him, vaporous high above the clouds. Let every created thing Give praise to the Lord, for he issued his command, and they came into being. He set them in place forever and ever. His decree will never be revoked. Praise the Lord from the earth, you creatures of the ocean depth, fire and hail, snow and clouds, wind and weather that obey him, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals, livestock wild scurrying animals and birds, kings of the earth, all people, rulers and judges of the earth, young men, young women, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord for his name is very great in his glory, towers above the earth and the heaven. He has made his people strong, honoring his faithful ones, the people of Israel who are close to him. Psalm 148, 1 through 14. Let them praise us, give Jehovah. That everything that has breath in it, praise him. You better not go to bed tonight without praising the most high God. God, we, pray, we praise you. And God, we honor you. And there is nothing in no one. There is no set of circumstances that will get between us and our praise. Because you are worthy to praise And Those who, who need to turn the music on and dance, they're going to do so. Those who do it quietly will do so, but we're just going to praise you, Father God. We cannot and will not let this day go by being in silence. We just simply cannot do it. So if we go stand on our back porch and say, oh, God, we praise you, then that's what we would do. If it's on the front porch, we'll do it. If we have to walk out in the street, if we have to go into the bedroom or upstairs or wherever we have to go, our voices, our mouth that you gave us will not be silent tonight. We will praise you by the way we live. But right now, Father God, we commit and we promise praise from the lips of your people. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Good night, beloved. Amen. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank Good you. Night. Amen.